let's go to safety first now. And uh, this week we're going to talk about post opening procedures. Hey, Brian, how you doing today? Shalom, David. So great to see you. Um, and to see you, too. Man, this is great. Like yeah. These safety first sessions that we're recording in the studio, it's so yeah. nice to be actually sitting here with you. It's way, way better. Drinking Although, a beer, even. Yeah. What do we got here? We got some Goose Island IPAs. It's good. You got to love the, the pale ale. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Dang Beautiful. It. Okay. Um, let's see. Today, the topic is... And this is one that uh, Carrie and I actually wanted you to talk about. This isn't listener submitted. Something I've often thought about is I have kind of a laundry list of things that I do after my parachute opens. I'm, I pull the drawstrings on my slider. I pull the slider down the risers and I stow it with, I happen to use one of the little uh, magnetic uh, uh, slider stows that's connected to the reserve flap. Uh, and then I loosen my chest strap up. I like to have my chest strap loosened up to get my parachute just a little bit flatter. And so <clears throat> I do these three things after every opening, and I've done it enough times now that it's pretty much muscle memory. I can go through those items very quickly. I've often wondered what what's going to happen someday if I go through my laundry list of items and then I reach up and release my brakes and realize that maybe I missed a malfunction. Now I'm sitting here with a slider that's attached to my rig. I'm a loose chest strap and thinking about a cutaway. So this is, yeah, this is a very valid point, right? It's, it's a major concern, uh, which is why when I, when I talk about this kind of stuff, the housekeeping things in the canopy course, I say, well, remember toggles don't always unstow properly. You know, it really does make sense after you've, you know, ver visually verified the canopy looks basically good. You've actually taken the time to inflate your end cells using your rear risers. You haven't uh, actually unstowed your brakes because, of course, you haven't pulled your slider down yet. So first, take that check. Maybe even, you know, take a second to just look at the parachute. Does it seem all right? Is it okay? If you want to get your slider down and stow it, well, we know that's going to release uh, with most of the modern methods uh, and the ways that you're stowing it to your rig. But when it comes to, to the chest strap, though, we really don't want to be chopping with the chest strap loose if we can avoid it. Now, I've done it. It, it didn't feel all that snug and controlled, but I got a perfectly good reserve deployment. I survived the jump. Um, but there, it, it would be nice to avoid that. So... If you think about it, toggles, right, the way they're stowed, it's pretty simple. And there's a chance that, that something will go wrong uh, with, say, that the toggle has been stowed in the same spot, you know, for thousands of times. And now it's got a divot in it and one side releases, the other one doesn't. This is not a landable configuration for most canopies. So if that's the case, you will be chopping. If you've already loosened your chest strap, now you will either be cutting away with it loose or you'll take the time to tighten it back up again. You know, I, I like to pull reasonably high, so I'd like to think that I could actually tighten it back up again. And would you do that before pulling the cutaway handle? Why not? Well, I certainly wouldn't cut away and then try to tighten it. <laughs> Just to ask. <laughs> that would be a trick. <laughs> that would be impressive. But no, I, I, I think that it would make sense to, if you can, tighten that thing back up. Now, the other issue here is when you cut away, do you have both hands on your cutaway handle looking at your reserve ripcord when you chop. If your chest strap is loose, it's going to be hard to find that reserve ripcord. You know, so, I, I mean, I'm a one hand on each handle guy. I have been for 20 whatever years, and it's served me well with my, what now, 11 uh, cutaways. Um, it's, it's something you should consider. I think every, every Scott ever should just sort of think about it. If you are going to be loosening your chest strap, one of the possibilities is that you're going to be having a little trouble finding that reserve ripcord if you chop with your chest strap loose. It's going to move around a hell of a lot. Take a look at it. After you loosen it up, put your hands on your handles then when you're under canopy. It's, uh, there's a lot of possibilities of where it can move to. Would you, would you advise uh, unstowing the brakes before you do that laundry list of items? Doesn't then? that make sense? Yep. That's always what I recommend. Now, here's the honest truth. I don't always do it that way. Sometimes I forget. Years of habit. Yeah. Right? Uh, but yeah, I, I do my best to remember after every deployment, 
get those brakes off. And of course, you can loosen your chest strap with your toggles in your hands, just you know, in half brakes, loosen it up that way. Or you can let go of your toggles. I mean, you're not at a grand, hopefully, when you're doing this stuff. Right. So you can let them go. That's why you've got those guide rings, so that you can drop your toggles. So, so you think the proper order then would be to deploy, check canopy, release the brakes, get yourself maybe onto a trajectory that's not flying up the wind line. Well, you can't release your brakes yet because you've got to get that slider down, right? So that's got to come down first. You don't have a choice, right? Because if you release the brakes first, now the tips of the toggles are, are out. going to keep the slider from slipping over. Absolutely, yeah. You try to pull the slider down, you flare, right? Because the toggles come down. So, so now, now it's got to be really verify canopy face an appropriate direction perpendicular to the jump run or something using your harness your rear riser steer your parachute perfectly well if you've got to inflate your end cells you can do it with your rears and then i think slider you know and of course including stowing the slider or maybe just pull it down the yeah, risers and I, I, well, go if ahead you and know that it's going to release yeah why not you know do the drawstrings I, I i find that the drawstrings work a little bit better if you do it before you pull the slider down it's uh -huh. just it's not all loose and flapping all around so you hit the hit the uh, drawstrings, you pull the slider down, you stow the slider, and then you know as you're doing all this stuff, I think it's also important to go. I know you're a big fan of breathing. <laughs> yeah, speed kills, right? Internal <laughs> speed the, is the worst kind of speed. So slider, um, then release the toggles, and then chest strap last. Yep, I think that's the most the most uh, clear way to do it. Um, and of course, you, you add to that stuff, Birdman stuff, and camera wings, and booties, sure. and clearing the goggles, and putting on pretty, the lips. Pretty soon, it's time to flare. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a whole lot to do. So, it, when you add that stuff up, and you go, "Geez, you know, if I'm on a small canopy with, you know, a descent rate that is as fast or faster than the old rounds, right? When it's the brakes are stowed, it's coming down pretty quick. You know, probably more than 18 feet per second. You don't have much time. Pulling it to is out <laughs> it just yeah. you know that seems to have gone away i don't i don't see a lot of that anymore yeah. i remember when i started jumping in 90 that was i mean break off at 25 pull it two. that Absolutely. was just the thing you know yeah, you'd be saddled out at 1500 feet <laughs> you know? yeah, it's true i did it um, too i did it too do you think that um free flying changed that like I the fact that one we, of the things like like all of a sudden we had to think about slowing down before we deployed. Yeah. Like it was yeah. another step that we yeah. had to do. Yeah. You get slammed once or twice. And you're like, oh, yeah. man, I'm moving right along yeah. here. I yeah. bet the break off at five or five, five. So I've got the time. Maybe high performance canopies as well. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, all that task loading, all that yeah. the, the excitement that can happen as a result of an elliptical canopy. Yeah. Brian, um, as always, been very insightful. We sure appreciate you being here again. And uh, we can find out more about you at BigAirSportsWithAZ.com. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. And from there, you can link over to my fear site, TranscendingFear.com. Brian, thanks so much. All right, everybody. Have a good day.